What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And of course, Jasmine Brand is here with me. Yes, I'm here. And Mona Scott Young is here also. I'm here. Now, you're lucky I still talk to you because last time I saw you. I beat you senseless. <laughs> what, no, what happened? I mean, that's a, that's a no, not beat me hey. senseless. Oh, like no, that. no, no. Not like that. Oh, Jesus. I don't believe I don't that. I one of us. In a cooking competition. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, don't All say right. it like that. That was pretty impressive. Okay. Yeah, because she you... was talking a lot of smack. She oh, brought yeah, her she own is. sauce. I just went and she put... is a Did I br- No, no, no. I brought my own combination of marination. See, now they I'm said West that Indian. wasn't allowed. Oh. Mm, did well, they? I don't remember that. But anyway, <laughs> after I was done... But who won? Who, who, who? I won. Oh, of course, yeah, she won. won. Oh, okay. Jerk yeah. chicken. No, but no, I would no. say Mona's a great cook. Oh, thank you. You know, Did but, you um, taste my jerk that day, yeah? I tasted you a did. little bit. Yes. Thank what you. did you think, Angela? It was good. Okay. You know, if I would have had time to prepare a uh, <laughs> no, no, no. you, know. <laughs> you know what the secret was? I'll tell you, when you gotta cook that quickly, you have to get in there and like massage the meat so that it opens it up mm-hmm. and takes the seasoning more quickly. And okay. I think when also, you just sprinkle it, it doesn't work. And I think also smaller pieces like and to smaller cut it up pieces, into smaller allow pieces you. Yeah, yeah, works yeah. too. So I like massaged, marinated, mm-hmm. and then like sauteed. And it was the the final di- it was jerk chicken. It was jerk chicken. And I, think that's what I, I didn't know you could cook like that though. I Which do, was, I love to cook actually i haven't had a chance to as much as i love to but i love to cook all right well let's get into it because um so many things are happening uh what we're talking about today though is a new film series love and murder atlanta playboy love and murder i like to say it like that oh love and murder murder. and tay diggs is actually starring in it and there's a lot of cameo appearance appearances in it yes tay diggs and keisha sharp she does such a great job they have such great chemistry together yeah yeah Yeah, and i first of all we got to talk about how you even like for this um, so it's two parts, right? It's two parts, yes. The Apprentice man lived the big life. We had to get it into two parts. And I'm not going to give anything away by mm-hmm. saying this because they tell you in the very first line. Yes, what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. It but opens. The, yeah. the whole point of it is... Yeah, it's a passion thriller. Right. right. It's a passion thriller. It's based on this guy, Lance Herndon. Um, back in the late 90s, he was like a huge tech entrepreneur, one of the first black tech entrepreneurs in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. He was a local celebrity. All the fly parties and the fancy, you know, cars and he had a huge house but he also was an like notorious a notorious womanizer it felt like he had a sex addiction I yes was, that, yes it did it, it did. did yes this yes, isn't yes. based on anything true though it is oh. It is. It is. It's a rip from the headline story. And I you didn't can, realize that. You can actually Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, oh, this makes it even more juicier. Exactly. So he was like <laughs> this huge womanizer. So I mean, when he was brutally murdered, and it was just one of those that you're just like, damn. You know, it's just not the kind of thing you usually see happening to us, right? Um, it was this whole who done it because right. he had pissed off so many women. Right. He had all these business partners that were trying to get rid of him because he was taking over, you know, on the business scene. Mm-hmm. So it and, was one of those. The Olympics was going on. The Olympics <laughs> and was going on. And I saw a flip on. phone. I was like, oh, okay. This exactly. Is, yeah. <laughs> he actually revolutionized the 911 system. Uh, yes. And exactly. they kept referencing that. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Right. Okay. exactly. So th- there are a lot of elements that are kind of directly related to the true events that happened. And then, of course, there's some creative license mm-hmm. that you take to, you know, mm-hmm. create composite characters, that kind of stuff. You know, that's so interesting. We just had, um, so one of our friends from Detroit, right, mm-hmm. Dennis Reed, he does these series, and it's kind of like, so Shanquella Robinson, the mm-hmm. woman who was um, unfortunately yep. murdered. Mm-hmm. I saw was, that when you guys did that. Right, interview. and so mm-hmm. the family was very upset with him um, for actually doing, but they changed the names, mm-hmm. the storyline was different. Mm-hmm. But it was inspired by that But situation. it was definitely yeah. inspired by um, a true story. And so sometimes it's kind of like, you know, and I get it because we love a true story. We love right. something that's inspired by real things that have happened. And sometimes it does help reopen, mm-hmm. you know, a yeah, case. Yeah, because I think you mentioned that, that it got mm-hmm. attention around yeah. the case. And But sometimes, you know, it's a little early. Right. Right. Sometimes yeah. it's just and this a little is, too soon. And, it, did, and this is from a while. From this the is 90s. from 1996. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Did you all have a conversation with the family or had they ever? Had <laughs> no, because there was already a book. This was an adaptation a of a book. Mm-hmm. So there had already been a book written. And if you look it up, there are all those true crime shows. Yeah. Yeah, this story in that. particular has been covered on a few of those crime shows. Right. You know, so we kind of just picked up, uh, we optioned the book, mm-hmm. so this was based on the book, and then, you know, again, taking some creative liberties to make uh, the story work for the time frame, but, 
you know, you figure not that it gets any easier, right. but I think that's also something to take into consideration. Right, timing. Like when we were doing hip hop homicides, that was definitely something that we, you know, worked on and, and we did that pop smoke story. Yeah. Mainly Ooh. because of fifties right. mm-hmm. involvement, right? Mm-hmm. And his attachment. But, you know, you just kind of wanna let a little bit of time go by for the family. Yeah, and I think it helps when you know somebody cares too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. fifty cent definitely. Oh yeah. You know, oh, and yeah. then I think Mona mm-hmm. Scott for your history. Mona Scott Young. Mona Scott mm-hmm. Young. Yes, sorry. For your history in um, in hip hop, we also know that this is something that, like, you know, you've worked with a lot of artists, so mm-hmm. we know there's a certain amount of care that you'll take yeah. um, when it comes to telling those stories. Absolutely, yeah. And you've worked with Missy Elliott from the beginning. From the beginning, the very mm-hmm. beginning, and we're having like a crazy year in this, the 50th year of hip hop. Right. So you've been you know? with her throughout and still? Throughout her entire career, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's amazing because yep. Missy Elliott seems like the coolest person. By the way, first um, hip hop woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall first, of Fame. Major. Yep, hip hop artist. Major. To, first female hip hop mm-hmm. artist to ever be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's going to be crazy. I think they're making their big announcement today about their new partnership and because it's going to be a live broadcast mm-hmm. November 3rd. Yes. That has to feel good, man, to have somebody mm-hmm. like Missy who's like, you know, y'all are clearly like ride or die for each other <laughs> yep. from yep. the beginning and you must know everything. And she's so chill. Like She seems mm-hmm. very like down She minds her business. Missy's incredibly passionate because she's a cancer. Okay. So, what is happening out in your hallways? But okay, know. she's incredibly passionate, but um, she's also very private, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, it's been uh, it's it's beyond a client, you know, manager relationship. Right. It's a friendship. It's a sisterhood. We go at it like she always says that. Yeah, are you? Po- oh, of course. <laughs> really? Yes, because she hard headed. No, so am I. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, but we heads. yeah we butt but butt heads in a healthy way. Like yeah. she just is very passionate about the things she's passionate about, mm-hmm. and so you know. She doesn't need yes men around her, right? right? Nobody needs yes men around them. And that's, I think, a lot of times why I end up like, like she'll say, boy, you are so brutally honest. You'll just keep it a thousand. Right. You don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just I don't need to blow smoke up your ass. You know, there's <laughs> so many other things. There are so many other people that will. I don't yeah. need to be one of those. What, what's the you silliest know? argument you and, you and uh, Missy have gotten into? The silliest? Yeah, um, the I'm trying to think of what would be considered silly because, you know, we're very passionate about the things we're passionate about. <laughs> might, um, be, might be silly to you. It's right, not silly right. to me. But it'll be something like, you know, number of dancers. Like, Missy wants what she wants, mm-hmm. and that's the end of the story, right? Mm-hmm. And for 20-something years, my job has been to make it happen. <laughs> and so, you know, it'll be like... I want 40 dancers on that stage. Well, the stage only holds 10. <laughs> you know, like, right. the well, uh, I don't out. know what you're going to do because I need we'll 40 dancers out. on yeah. it. Exactly. And yeah. sure enough, day of, there's 40 dancers on this and stage. And bringing it to today, you have Scarlett. Also, yes. you work with. Tell us how that happened. We, uh, we just love Scarlett. Right. I mean, you know what? Talking about, you know, the 50 years and reconnections and stuff, Busta's another mm-hmm. one that I have a close relationship to. And um, he and Swiss Beats actually tag teamed and was like we need to talk to you we need to talk to you and that went on for like a couple of weeks and I was like okay okay what is it and Buster was like yo we need you on this. And um, he sent that me. That impersonation. Th- that was a bad impersonation of Busta. <laughs> I, I kind of liked it. I feel like I have a better Busta impersonation. <laughs> um, he was just like, I need you to check out this young girl, right? And so he sent me the page. And then my husband, who was like, look, you do not need one more thing on your plate. Mm-hmm. He, you know, checked it out as well and was like, yo, you got to do this. There's something special about her. Oh. And And I was just like. I say this, right? It's like my DNA activated, you know what I'm mm. saying? Because at, at the heart of what I do, whether it's as, you know, a producer, whatever it is, you know, I'm a manager. Right. Right? Somebody who kind of helps talent realize their potential. Because I'm sure a lot of people have come to you before that and been like, can you mm-hmm. manage this person or can you work with me? So for some reason, Scarlett, as a newer, younger artist, you really took to her. Yeah, yeah, because there was something about, you know, not only what she had been through, but it was more her heart mm-hmm. that she wanted this so badly, right? And I always say, talent is just one small piece of the puzzle, people. You know, there's a lot of talented, you know, people out there, but they're all the other things that come along with it, mm-hmm. the drive, the fire in the belly, the you know, the desire to do whatever it takes in terms of putting in that work, you know, and um, her backstory, you know, everything that she'd been through and the fact that she was able to channel that into her music, I felt like, okay, 
DNA activated. <laughs> Got to put the hat back on and get back in there. And, you know, built a team around her. Shout out to Treva Williams, who is out there on promo tour right now um, with Scar. And, um, you know, my partner is uh, D. Salute the mm-hmm. General Alima. So it's just like we've built this village around her. Busta, you know, everybody from... Cardi, you've seen um, Mary J. Blige. Right. You know, everybody is just like... Everyone's embracing her. Embracing yeah. her, yeah. What about you being in front of the camera as talent? How is that for you? Is that something that you embrace more or you would want to do? Um, It's one of those things that when if it happens, it happens, and usually it's within the scope of me just needing to get a job done. It's not something I've actively been like, oh, I want to be mm-hmm. in front of the camera, but it's one of those things for me when life presents an opportunity, right. you know, I just kind of like step in. Okay, let's see. Would you like <laughs> to have to like your off. own show or something? Would you like to have Ooh. some type of own, your own? You got the voice for it. Mm-hmm. Really? And I can experience. do radio. Can I do radio? Yes, but relax. <laughs> no, oh, man. okay. <laughs> yeah. You saw. No, no, no. <laughs> no like, Why we can't all be together? <laughs> Every once in a while, you guys can have pop me in, pop, you in. Pop, yeah, in. pop in. You, know? you definitely yeah. need a co-host. You need a co- yeah. co-host and Yeah, come guest co-host whenever you can. I love that. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. It's, you know, I enjoy it when I'm doing it, but it's not something that I'm actively like, oh, this is my trajectory. This is what I want to be doing. Now, yeah. listen, because we're talking about Love and Murder Atlanta Playboy, mm-hmm. there's no way we cannot also notice there were a lot of people from Love and Hip Hop that also yeah. made features. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw Carly mm-hmm. Red, was April, Young Jock, Young Jock yeah. Yandy. Mm-hmm. Yandy. Wait a minute, yep. I missed Yandy. I watched, oh, that's because you fir- haven't seen her yet. Okay. Yeah, she's coming I later tomorrow. Episode. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Tomorrow the next episode goes up on BT Plus. Check it out. Okay. <laughs> but Yandy is in that episode, yeah. I have a question about you using talent from a living hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel pressure? Like, do you, do, you know, like, mm-hmm. I need to... No, look, no, okay. not at all. I mean, <laughs> it, no, no. Th- listen, I don't no. feel... No, um, it's really about, here's an opportunity. I know these guys want to expand their brand, expand on their talents. Mm-hmm. They can act, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot mm-hmm. of them are really good, and so... When the opportunity is there, I always just call and say, hey, I'm doing this project. Yeah, when I directed my first short, I called Yandy. You know, she did a great job with that. Now with this project. So, yeah. I would say Yandy works hard. Like, I've done things with her, Mm -hmm. and she be on time. She'll have the whole family there with somebody watching the (laughs) kids. Like, she will make it happen some way, somehow. Yep, yep, yep. The work ethic is there. And Carly, too, she's been acting forever. Jock, I think, is just a phenomenal talent. (laughs) He's funny. Like, he he just needs to be acting on a regular basis. He does. He's funny to me. He's not even trying to be funny. No, that's what he's got natural comedic timing. But I also think he's really versatile Mm. and can do, you know, Mm -hmm. something more dramatic as well. Um, Maybe you yeah. should manage him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that idea. Now he's like, that's a good idea. Yeah, right, right, Jock. right. No, that's where it's kind of like, Ugh, because of fuzzy. course everybody feels like, oh, why you did this and you didn't do me. You, I'm sure people think you have a favorite. I was going to say. Of course they do. I've heard it she over and over. Everybody thinks, oh, Does Yandy's a- your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> No, she it's just be. that. She should be. No, you know what it is? <laughs> She's been with me. Remember, Yandy started with me yes. as an intern. Mm-hmm. She wasn't even originally going to be on Love and Hip Hop. She wasn't right? even going to be on Love and Hip Hop. I was constantly like, girl, you should be doing this. You know, you can represent a whole different, you know, side of women in hip hop, the business side of things. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> she took to it like a duck to water, though. I can't uh, front. She's a natural. Yeah. And listen, how, so you've been tied to that franchise for so long. And every time mm-hmm. something goes... Years. Yeah, every time something goes wrong, Mona Scott Young is the person that people always go mm. to. And I don't know that you still handle day-to-day... I, listen, it has been 13 years. That machine is self-sustaining. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, it, I'm not in the field. I'm not, and I know it's hard for people to understand that, which is why, you know, it, it's like a double-edged sword, right? You can't be like, oh, here I am to provide the opportunities and for the accolades and then be like, oh, that backlash. Don't, right. I'm know, not involved. Don't bug yeah. me with the backlash. So I know that people are going to have their narratives, what they want to believe, and I'm not about to sit there like this going back and Forth, oh, right? right? Handled. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> Mona. That was. Mona. <laughs> that was very simply that. The, le- the network had put out their statement mm-hmm. and they had handled it. Right. So people were coming to me and what they don't understand is at this point, I see the show on the same basis that they see the show. Okay, so you're like, right? oh damn. She I- I'm not, lo- you know, I'm not involved with the cuts anymore. I'm not in the field. The cast will tell you this. Mm-hmm. There is actually a group of, you know, 
because people are always like, oh, the man, you know, where are the black people making show? There's a group of black women, you mm-hmm. know, on the ground making this show. And so it's like the whole idea that everything, but that's been since day one. Right, right. right. So it's, it's hard for me to say at this point, well, I wasn't there. And mm-hmm. so I, I, I let it ride and I hope that it, you know. You hope that <laughs> it rides out yeah. and, and it corrects itself because I do believe that, you know, the network saw this as a teachable moment. Mm-hmm. Right. I know that they did some kind of a digital piece yeah. at the end of this. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not day to day on the franchise you- anymore. I'm making movies now. Love and Murder. Right. Atlanta scripted. Playboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing scripted, making movies, expanding, you know, created a platform, created an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. Put it in the hands of folks. Shout out to LaShawn Browning, Antoinette Media, mm-hmm. Donna Ed Rochelle. There, there is a team, you know, okay. of black women doing this show. So okay. Luna said, it's, it's not me no more. I, I'm just saying, <laughs> but, but but I get it, though. Right. I understand why people still... We're going to always associate heavily you with Heavily associate, right. exactly. Yeah. Heavily associate. And look, I'm proud of the platform. I'm proud of the opportunities it has presented. I think we've seen a lot of good come from it in terms of what the cast has been able to go on Mm -hmm. and do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've prospered. And so I, you know... And I think even the fact that certain people that you've uh, been in this industry with still want to work with you, like 50 Cent. Of you course, know, like of Missy course. Like Elliott, like yeah. a Busta Rhymes. Rhymes, yes. It does speak a lot to how people see how you move behind the scenes. Exactly. People who know me, that's why on my page it says, if you don't know me personally, I can't take it personal. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't know me personally, because I get it. You know, people are going to form opinions. And and people are passionate about right. that franchise. Well, you that's know what why I'm you saying? have such a big viewership for that show. Yeah, they're passionate. Mm-hmm. They go hard. Like every mm-hmm. once in a while, I've got to like, oh, no comments. You know, not that I live on social media in that way, but it's hard to take that in, you know. But Mona. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Sure. Do you have any, and I don't think you do, do you have any love and hip-hop regrets throughout your tenure there? You're, you know, you're, doing, you're doing other things now, but looking back, do you have any? I try not to live with regret because there's nothing you can do, right? You can't turn back the hands of time. You start to, you know, build on negative thoughts that then hamper your ability to move forward confidently Mm -hmm. because then you start to second guess yourself. Mm -hmm. I look at everything as an experience. Everything is, this is the way it was supposed to happen. I did my best at the time. Right. And let's move forward. And and let's move forward. Let's take the lessons away from that. Mm -hmm. And then let's move forward from there. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I can't coulda, woulda, shoulda. What good is that? Nothing. You know? (laughs) I can't change it. At all. Did you ever have a time where, you know, being married, Mona Scott Young, that you felt like work was, uh, was taking up too much of your time yes mm-hmm. absolutely I talk about that openly it's like I, I struggled with balance for a very long time because I felt like if I don't stay in it if mm. I'm not every day hustling hard if I'm not, you know and yeah you miss a lot along the way right you know and I said this the other day that the pandemic actually did me a service because it made me sit my ass down Mm -hmm. and I had no choice and then it brought up a lot of self-reflection and then you looked around and you realized that people were dropping around us like flies yeah and we so busy like going 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 that we're not stopping to you know take stock and appreciate so it slowed me down tremendously in a way that I feel was healthy you know especially like everybody has talked about the mental health impact, mm-hmm. right? You don't stop to think about that when you're going, going, going hard. Yeah, you sometimes think we about, think everything's yeah. just going to stop and when you're not there and you have to realize things will still happen. What? You they will step over your, your rotting but, carcass and keep it moving. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you got that right. <laughs> but what do you the do to protect your energy when you're talking on. about mental health? <laughs> you know? And like you said, and th- there's times you get a lot of flack, mm-hmm. but what do you do for yourself when you're like, you know, if you don't know me, you don't understand who I am at my heart. So to protect yourself, what are some I things that the you noise. do? I get off of social media or even within my life, I just... I'm not out as much. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're exposing yourself to a lot of energies when you're moving around and stuff. And sometimes when you're in a great space, it's all good. You've got that shield to deflect that. But if you feel like you're in a vulnerable place where you're feeling susceptible, like protect yourself, protect your energy. The same way a turtle retreats into that shell. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Take a minute. 
it's all good. You're not missing shit. Yeah. yeah. You know? Listen, I use social media when it's time for work and outside of that, I don't mm. even go. I could not go on there all weekend and be okay right, with that. Right. And then when it's time to get back to work, I'm like, all right, let me see what I missed. Mm-hmm. You know? And one of the things that I prefer is if I could actually use it for social, right? right. If it's just like, <laughs> but it's not. It's yeah. like it's 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 this dartboard. You become this dartboard where people feel like this is where I'm going to project all of my anger and insecurities and let you know. I'm like, you don't even know me. Right. I don't even know you. You know. And one thing, Angela you mad that, mad. One thing that Angela says about people on social media she's never met them in person so like right. you, you get these negative comments have you ever had a person come up to you like they always want a picture now, they don't never exactly. right. or they have a pitch maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. listen all the pitch, time a pitch or a picture exactly. and nobody exactly. yeah exactly. where are these about me <laughs> and I feel like there's a little bit of a mob mentality right so even I've watched people's positions changed based on what people are saying mm-hmm. right yes I rock with you yes you're the worst thing in the world yes I rock with you you know and I'm just like what is your real position here right so but like you said i've never <laughs> i don't want to say that out loud yeah i don't encourage wanna, yeah, it wanna, yeah no 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 but word, i'll be the first <laughs> listen i think there is a value <laughs> to having that direct line having that open communication mm-hmm. but i also think you have to understand that when you open up that floodgate right there is zero filter all i know is you if know. i blocked you and then you come up to me and ask me for something and then i go look up your name and do see you really block, do that i'll be like mm, no <laughs> angela has a black I, know if I blocked you it's for a reason angela has a block list not a black I list definitely do. a block I, list because I, I, <laughs> I don't ever want to be tempted to respond to anybody saying something negative so i just block it right away or i right. might mute you and then you mm-hmm. can say whatever you want and I just won't speak. or do you ever write out that response get it off your chest and then delete it you know what I, I'm saying you, had, you, you showed me something before I'm like no you'd be like okay yeah I should yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll start and then I'll be like why am I doing this yeah. right because yeah. then I always regret it afterward I have a whole kind of like sister <laughs> and and of course my husband is in it too and they be like no 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 Don't. let us see what you're saying oh, no just get it off your chest yeah and then put it delete. in your nose yeah. from yeah, now exactly. on whenever somebody says something I don't like I'm just going to put handle <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That's my response. <laughs> Listen. Now, I tend to believe in the good in people all the time first. Have you ever come across somebody who you just feel like is just not a good person? Like, I, because sometimes you do have to work with people and just be like, I hate the fact that this person is just not good for my soul, my spirit, just not a good person. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, don't think we can say we've gone through life without running across people that you're just, I mean, there's some. You know, very few times I could probably count on one hand where your whole aura rejects a person, right? Right. You get around them and all of a sudden you're just like, ooh, you know? Um, And then other times people reveal themselves. If you pay attention, you're like, okay. But again, I'm just like, if I know my intentions were pure, I can't be responsible for your actions. Right. Right? I can only govern my reaction. Yeah, no, that's you know, true. That's a word. So, I'm responsible for me. Exactly. I can't mm-hmm. control what you do. Yeah. Now, back to Love and Murder, Atlanta Love Playboy. Love and Murder, Atlanta you, Playboy. Excuse me, you have to say it like that every time. <laughs> Love and Murder, Atlanta, Atlanta Playboy. Playboy. Yes. <laughs> how did you get Tay Diggs? Mm. And Ke- like, How did you get Keisha Sharp and Tay Diggs? How did this even happen? Because I think when you attach them first and mm. foremost, that kind of helps every. Or did they? Oh, come absolutely! Last? No, no, no. They actually were one of the some of the earlier attachments, and Tay specifically. I mean, you know, you look at a character like Lance, and you're like, okay, especially with the style of the way we wanted to make the movie, right? Mm-hmm. If you, you know, when you watch it, you'll see it feels very much like a period piece. It feels like it one does. of those movies yeah, yeah. you yeah. would have watched back in the 90s. Because mm-hmm. it had, you know, like, I think, a like car phone or something that was like a... I, I forget, there was one scene... Yeah, that was like, no. he pulled up yeah. the car phone. But not only that, like, the music, the uh-huh. way it's shot, you yeah. know what I'm saying? The way it's shot, too, yeah. Yeah, yes, it yes, feels yes. Feel like... like there was a Steve Harvey suit in there or somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was the wide shoulders. Uh-huh. It feels like a movie that is from the 90s, right? Yeah. Not just a movie about the 90s, but a movie that is from the 90s. Yeah. So, so that, that was intentional. That was intentional. And hopefully people get that because, you know, in retrospect, sometimes you have creative ideas and you're like, huh, did that yeah. work? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But um, it was important to find somebody that can that could carry that role, right? Because here was this guy, he's flashy, you know, very braggadocious, Mm -hmm. and then was a ladies' man, right? So it wasn't so much about finding somebody that looked exactly like Lance. It was about finding somebody that could carry that off, right? And Tay was brilliant because you actually, like, 
forgot this was Tay Diggs. Mm-hmm. He's, right? a great, he's a great yeah. actor. He really yeah, is. Yeah, he, and he's a very funny person. He's yeah. funny right. naturally. And then yeah. it was good to yeah. see him and April on there together. Exactly. Being a, yep. That was cute. Yeah. And they were super professional. I mean, I get asked that about, like, how was it working? They were super pro- You wouldn't even have known. Right. They was in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Well, they, they did were have super, some super. together, you know. They, they did. did. <laughs> they did. So they, yeah. But it was funny because I'm like, all of the dynamics, especially with having some of the cast members in there, it was like, okay, so now, and I don't want to give it away for the folks who haven't seen it yet, so make sure you guys catch up on part one mm-hmm. so that you're brought up to speed by the time you watch part two tomorrow. But, you know, there's some couplings in there that I was just like, huh, I wonder what that's like. Yeah, you I know, was watching that, too. that and seeing that and, you know. Well, I just want to give some tips. If you are a woman and you're boot up with your man, but he's cheated on you in the past, mm-hmm. y'all may not want to watch this together. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. It could be triggering. Exactly. It could be mad all over or, again. Or, or it might inspire some ideas, you know? Uh, he really had some nerve. Like. Yeah. But you know, what is also interesting is that, because for somebody like that, they also have to have something likable about them, Th- too. That's yes. what I was saying. There has to be a redeemable mm-hmm. aspect. He was incredibly charismatic from everything really you know smart. that we've... Very, very smart. And just one of those kind of affable guys that you can't help but like. You know, even though you know right. oh, you're a dirty dog. Right. But I like you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get There's, it. You understand. You understand yeah. it. And that's what I think Tay did an amazing job, you know, conveying. And so portraying. is this going to be something that is, because I, I I feel like I read somewhere that you were saying this will be a series. And that's be because more... that's my plan. Okay. I don't know if BT <laughs> Plus is with my plan, but that's my plan. <laughs> okay. You know, Eric and I, the idea here was Eric Thomasunas from Swirl, Swirl Films. Shout out to my partners at Swirl. The idea here was love and murder as an overarching umbrella premise Mm -hmm. and then ripped from the headlines passion Mm. thrillers okay you know what I'm saying just kind of always expanding on the brand because there's so many of those that are fascinating oh unfortunately yeah so many of those kinds of stories and I just thought it could be a great way you know to tell those stories under that passion thriller because we know we love Love mm-hmm. and we love we murder. You know, I was reading somewhere a long time ago that um, when it comes to murder, like for men, usually they'll get charged with a crime of passion mm-hmm. if they murder their significant other. But for women, it's more premeditated um, when that happens because they feel like we're not pa- like physically. Well, no, we had to plan it. It's, yeah. We had to plan it because we yeah. can't just act in the moment. Right. Yeah. I also think it's that constant responsibility or that constant double standard that they place on women, right? right? To control Because you. we, you know, think things through. We mm-hmm. plan things, so why would it be any different right. when we're killing <laughs> our man? You know? Right. We, we, we don't act impulsively. We we have a plan. <laughs> like, no, wait a minute. Because okay. we've got to make sure we cover all our bases. <laughs> or try to. Or at least we try to. What yes, is Mona exactly. Scott Young like when she's mad? Oh, God, I don't know. You know, you got to ask my husband. So what am I like when I'm mad? I don't know. Are you... Because you know what it is. I'm an Aquarian, right? So we <laughs> say what we got to say and we keep it moving. Okay. Right? I'm not hanging on to it. And, it's, and so that's a bit disorienting for people because they want to stay mad. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm over it. Okay. You so know, I said like what I had to say. Back and forth. You don't raise your voice. Like... Very rarely. I mean, there are a few times where people have gotten me to the... Who the, and it's usually my daughter. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, very rarely am I just like, ah, you know, because, and that's something just very quickly going back to the franchise, I say all the time, like, you can express yourself and be taken seriously. And people know, not you know, without it Yelling. devolving mm-hmm. and becoming, you know, it's certainly without it having to ever get physical. But people like to see things turn into yelling and screaming on, you know, that's what I feel like that when it comes to that. I also feel like people, when they're on these shows, they like to do that because it gets more... You know, yeah. people going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's a, then they it's a look spot. back later and they're like, I should have said this. I, I yeah. should have did that. There's nothing like a good read. I feel like we appreciate that too. <laughs> I, do, yeah. I mean, An put your words one. together, An make it. One. You know, yeah. yeah. They, it's got to be clever. Yeah. Exactly. And you got to be pre, clever. You know, not premeditated. <laughs> well, you got to pre. You got to think about it so that you nail yeah, it. Yeah, but, but you can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah. But you know, 
how you, you sometimes. Gotta it. But you just got to know how to deliver it. Yeah, you got to have to be it's premeditated. premeditatedly mm-hmm. spontaneous. Yes. You know? Like, mm-hmm. uh, well, Mona, uh, one more thing, too. So yes. when it comes to this, obviously you're loving this, um, you know, scripted series. I am. So do you think you would do more shows like in the reality Absolute. space? Yes. Well, you mean, am I still doing unscripted? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Still, okay. Absolutely. We've got, you know, a ton of things in development, things like that we're waiting for the green light on. Um, music, everything from like competition shows mm-hmm. to formats, you know, we've got a lot of things that we're working on with a number of networks. Hopefully some announcements, you know, coming in the near future. Okay. But we're also working on more scripted projects as well. We have another um, film that's in the finishing stages, mm-hmm. you know, and the strike, of course, out of respect for the writers and the actors. We've, you know, stopped down even on development on the scripted side. But hopefully now that, you know, yep. everything is getting resolved, we yep. can get writers. back to work. <laughs> yeah, but we're just finishing up on a project that, you know, we had shot, thankfully, before the strike went into effect. And hopefully now that everything's lifted, we'll be able to get it up on your screen. Was it scripted or non-scripted? Scripted, scripted, a feature. Okay. Yeah, starring Ms. Vivica Fox. Ooh. Yes, and Jesse, he um, co-wrote and directed the project. Yeah. Okay, Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a passion project that one day that you haven't done yet, but you know on your bucket list, one day I would love to get this I've got to get the answer to that because you're like the second person that asked me that question. Because mm-hmm. I could, I the, could see you saying, "Okay, at some point, I would love to do, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Was that based biopic? on a two, uh, yeah biopic on Missy Elliott?" Oh well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Missy doesn't want to do a Missy biopic. You know, she just feels like her story is still being written. Of course, we get asked about that almost on a daily. Um, what would that story be? I don't know. You know, because there's nothing that I'm just like, oh, that's the holy grail. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything that I'm thinking about, I kind of try to get moving on. So I've got a lot, like I said, in development, but nothing that is like. What about that you, what about you telling your own story? Oh God, people would be bored. That's the funny part. Mona, <laughs> you know? Mona, I'm telling you, people Mona would be bored. Out. They'd be like, "Really? That was it?" <laughs> Mona, you know, cut it you out. met okay. a dude, you found love, you built, you know, like, okay. y'all had some kids. You know, people just swear that you I'm gonna. Judge it up. Yeah. I could judge it up. Yes, yeah. take some creative liberties. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming through. And I know as things are developing with all these new projects, you're gonna give us a little heads up. Absolutely. So we have the information. I, I love this way up. I love. This this connection. I love this duo. Um, so thank you for having me. Do you ever walk out of interviews and be like, fuck them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have said it in the room. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> All right, well, Mona Scott Young, you guys, make sure you check out Love and Murder. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy on BET Plus, parts one and part two. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. Thank you, Mona. <laughs>